never know that Tom and Sid was even half-brothers, would you? If he'd learn his Bible verses for Sunday school, he might be a better boy. We won't wait for him. Sit down and eat. Uh, fetch the cake. Let me help you with it, Cousin Mary. Miss Polly! Oh, Miss Polly! Well, what is it, Jim? Does you want this wood or this wood? Oh, any wood, Jim. Maybe this wood is better than this wood. Oh, all right. <laughs> Land of Goshen. Your hair looks like a horror's nest. Did you wash your hands, Blood? Mmm, gave yourself a lick and a promise, I'll be bound. Well, eat your supper before it gets cold. Lord, we thank thee for our daily bread. Amen. Bread, Cousin Mary, please. Tom, it was powerful warm in school today, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Hmm. Didn't you want to go swimming, Tom? No, well, not very much. But you're not too warm now, though, are you? Some of us stuck our heads under the pump. Mine's damp yet, see? Yes. If you only pumped water on your head, you didn't have to undo your shirt collar where I sewed it, did you? Hmm. Well, I was sure you'd played hooky from school and gone swimming. Didn't you sew his collar with white thread, Aunt Polly? Yes, I did. That thread's black. Tom! Huh. Ouch! It could turn black, couldn't it, in the sun? Well, you're enough to give a saint the conniptions. Yes, sir. Now, you march straight up to bed and write now. on Saturday. I would, Aunt Polly, but there ain't any whitewash. Oh, yes, there is. I mix three whole bucketfuls myself. That whole great big fan? Every inch of it. And you don't want any streaks in it, do you, Aunt Polly? Nary a one. I'll tell the boys you can't go swimming, because you got to whitewash the old fence. Bye, Tom.
Say, Jim, I'll fetch the water if you'll whitewash. I can't last down. Miss Polly told me, go along and tend to my own business. And if I don't, she snatched the head off of me. She, she never licks anybody. Only wash them over the head with a thimble, like this. Ouch! Excuse me, Mas Tom. I didn't mean to hurt you. Jim, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll whitewash some, I'll show you my sore toe. Let me see. Swimming, I am. But of course, you'd rather work. What do you call work? Well, ain't that work? Well, all I know is it suits Tom Sawyer. Say, let me whitewash a little. Think I'd let a dude whitewash? Oh, come on now. I'd let you if you was me. No. If it were the inside, I wouldn't mind. And Aunt Polly wouldn't. But she's awful particular about the outside. Oh, shucks. I'd be careful. I'll give you the rest of my apple. Well, here, no. I'm afeard. And I'll give you this, too. Ain't that a humdinger? What is it? It's a knob off a brass door knocker. All my life I wanted a knob off a brass door knocker. Well, here. Quick, before I change my mind. Well, what's the matter now? Can't you tend to work and leave a body in peace? Mayn't I go now, Aunt Polly? How much have you done? It's all done. Three coats, too. Now, see here, Tom. Don't you lie to me. I can't bear it. Well, look. Huh. Well, I never. <laughs> There's no getting around it. You can work when you've a mind to. Well, run along and play. Virtue is its own reward, as the good book says. Sydney, dear. You can put on your Sunday suit. Wait till I get my hands on that blabber skite when he comes home. Go on. Oh, dear. Oh. You are. Hello, Amy. Hello, Tom. Dear, I've got something for you. Where have you been such a long time? I haven't seen you since we got engaged. I had the chicken pox. You haven't got it now, have you? No, silly. Think my ma'd let me out if I wasn't all cured. Who's moving in across the way? I heard my ma say it was the new judge. Oh, that's their silly little girl. She's awful. Ma sent me over to play with her, but I wouldn't. She's too ugly. Nobody around here is going to like her. Hmm. 
Say, Amy, are you sure you got over the chicken pox? Yes. Certain sure? Why, yes. What's the matter? You look awful peaked. I do. What are those two pink spots on your cheek? Pink spots? Why, yeah. Of course, maybe it's only poison ivy. Yes, maybe it is. But I ain't been out of the house. Oh! <laughs> And you see, Judge, whenever one of our pupils learns two verses of scripture, he or she receives a blue ticket. Now, 100 blue tickets entitle him or her to one yellow ticket. And 10 yellow tickets bring the reward of a beautiful Bible. <laughs> Attention! Attention! <clears throat> Attention! Today, we have the rare privilege of distinguished visitors. Judge Thatcher, the newly elected magistrate of our county, has consented to make the presentation of the Bible Prize to Sidney Sawyer. Uh, come up, Sidney. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Sidney, but I'm afraid you'll have to wait another week. You are two tickets short. I wasn't 
wasn't short when I came in here. <laughs> I don't suppose there is anyone else who has learned the necessary 2,000 verses? I thought not. Mr. Walters, I'm ready for a Bible. I've got enough tickets. Well, very well. Take a seat on the platform while I count them. One. Two, three, four, five, <clears throat> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Yes, it's quite true. Here is the requisite number of tickets. Then the young man is certainly entitled to his reward. Yes. Then if you will be so kind, Judge. Well, my fine little man, what is your name? Tom. Oh, no. It is, uh... Thomas. But you have another one, I dare say. Tell the gentleman your other name, Thomas, and say, Sir. <laughs> sir Thomas Sawyer. <laughs> Two thousand verses are a great many. And you can never be sorry for the trouble you took to learn them. No doubt you know the names of all the twelve disciples. Who were the first two? Answer the judge, Thomas. Don't be afraid. He's a frightened, poor boy, but I know he'll tell me. Now, the names of the first two disciples were... were... Adam and Eve! <laughs> Yes, Mr. Dobbins. Come up here. Now, sir, why are you late this time? Perhaps you'd like to sit with the girls again. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Dobbins. Then I trust you have an excellent excuse. I stopped to talk with Huck Finn. Huckleberry Finn. Does your aunt allow you to associate with such riffraff? Well, I... Of course not. Go and sit with the girls, you... You... <laughs> we will start with drill in multiplication. You will have precisely two minutes to write the answers on your slates. Pepper's Fugit, time is fleet. Who drew this? Who slaces this? Dona Papa, did you draw this? No, sir. Willie Fisher, did you? No, sir. 
Benjamin Rogers? Rebecca Thatcher? Did you? No? Look me in the eye. Did you draw this? Speak up! No? We'll see. Come up here, Rebecca Thatcher. I done it. <gasps> what? I did it, sir. Come up here, Thomas Sawyer. Attention, we will continue from where we were interrupted. You have precisely 32 seconds to complete the drill. How could you be so wrong? Could you be so noble? How could you be so noble? Hello, Tom. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Becky. Do you love rats? No, I hate them. Well, I do too, live ones. But I mean dead ones. To swing around your head on a string. No, I don't care for rats much anyway. What I like is chewing gum. So do I. I wish I had some now. I've got some home. I'll let you chew it a while tomorrow. But you must give it back to me. Say, hey, Becky, was you ever engaged? What's that? Why, engaged to be married. No. Would you like to? I reckon so. I don't know. What's it like? Like? Why... It, it ain't like anything, it's... Remember what I wrote on your slate? Yes. Well, just say that to each other. You're engaged. Anybody can do it. Well, not now. Some other time. Tomorrow. Please, Becky, I'll whisper. I'll whisper it ever so easy. Now, you whisper to me. Turn your face away so you can't see, and then I will. Turn your face away. Now it's all over but the kiss. Kiss? What do you kiss for? Like that? Well, they always do that. Please, Becky. Don't be afeard. It ain't anything at all. Please, Becky. Please. It's all done. After this, you ain't never to marry anybody but me. Never. Will you? No, Tom. And you ain't ever to marry anybody but me, either. Of course. That's part of it. It's so nice. I never heard of it before. Why, it's ever so gay. When me and Amy Lawrence, when we were... Amy Lawrence? You and Amy Lawrence? Oh, Tom. And I ain't the first you've ever been engaged to. <laughs> Don't cry, Becky. That was a month ago. Go away. <laughs> Look, here's something I want to give you. I don't want it. 
It's a novel for Brass Door Knocker. Please, Becky, won't you take it? <laughs> well, here's the best treasure I got. Take it. Cure warts with. Cure warts with? How do you do that? Why, you take your cat and long about midnight, you go get in the graveyard where somebody wicked's been buried. Then when the devil comes to take the fellow away, why, you heave your cat after him and say, devil follow corpse, cat follow devil, warts follow cat, I'm done with you. That'll cure any wart. When are you going to try the cat? Well, they're burying old horse Williams today. I reckon the devil will come after him tonight. Horse Williams, suppose he's wicked enough? Oh, yes. He's the wickedest man in these parts. Since my pa got run out of town. Would you let me go with you? If you ain't afeard. Who's afeard? Well, I'm going fishing. I guess you better be getting to school. I'll be waiting for you at midnight. Will you meow? I'll meow, and you meow back. The last time, eight cats came out before you did. Meow. 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 Oh, meow. Did people like it for us to be here? It's all right. If you don't step on them. Say, Huggy, do you reckon Horse Williams hears us talking? Of course he does. You can't be too particular how you talk. I wish that said Mr. Williams. Get your money when your job's finished. Not until then. Kind of high and mighty, ain't you, for a grave robber? I want my money now. And some more next week. And some more after that. Why, oh, you blackmailing half breeder? Oh, God, God, don't stall the hand. <laughs>
You've got to get out of here. What's the matter? <laughs> Joe. Joe. I never meant to do it. Of course you didn't, Mom. Of course you didn't. Huck, do you suppose we ought to tell anybody? Do you want to get us killed? Why, well, that devil engine Joe wouldn't think any more of drowning us than a couple of cats. If we was to tell on him... Look at here. Let's take and swear to one another to keep Mom. Give me your hand. No, that's good enough for little rubbishy things. You ought to be writing about a big thing like this and signed in blood. Yeah, and lots of swearing. Hook. Finn, Finn, Tom, Sawyer, swears they will keep Mum, and may they drop down dead in their tracks, if they ever till and rot. on that door. The doctor didn't come home all night. cooking supper. What ails you? Nothing I know of. I know what'll cure it. Painkiller? Painkiller. A double dose and right now. And you did talk such stuff in your sleep. You said blood. Blood. You said that over and over. And you said, I won't tell. Tell what? Now, you take this. It'll cure anything. Open your mouth. Open your mouth! <laughs> now, get your bread. And then you take this other spoon for Here! Hear what I say? Do it! Do it! Don't ask for it, Peter, unless you really want it. You better make sure. Well, all right. But if you find you don't like it, you mustn't blame anybody but your own self. is that cat? I don't know, Aunt Polly. I never see anything like it. What did make him act so? Cats always act so when they're having a good time. Oh, they do, do they? Did you give that cat some painkiller? Look me in the eye. Hmm. Oh. Now, sir, what do you want to treat that cat so cruel for? I'd done it out of pity for him because he hadn't any aunt. Hadn't any aunt, you numbskull. What's that got to do with it? Because if he'd had one, she'd have roasted the innards out of him without any more feeling than if he was a human. But, Tom, you, you mustn't be cruel to dumb beasts. Well, it's cruel to a dumb beast. Might be cruel to a human, too, Aunt Polly. But, 
Tom. It did do you good. Done him good, too. I never see him get along so before. Oh, go along with you before you aggravate me again. You know what, Sid, would he take sugar? Well, Sid, don't torment the body the way you do. Oh. Don't punish Tom, Aunt Polly. It was Sid broke it. Well, you didn't get a lick of miss, I reckon. You've been in plenty of other audacious mischief. Here's chock full of potato salad and a great big chocolate cake and pickles. Or to drown myself. Then they'd be sorry. Ben Rogers is going to bring a whole lot of fishing worms to poke down girls' necks. They seen my body laying there all wet and still. Then they dress up and cry some. My mom was going to whack me if I didn't put these shoes on. Treat you like a dog. Like an old curved dog. Shoes. Anybody think there was snow on the ground? Burning you out with painkillers. Squeezing your feet. Enough to make anybody run away. I just as soon. Huh? We would never wear shoes. We could go a thousand miles away. We could go all over the world. We could get hot physical with it. We can use hot spread. <laughs> Listen, don't talk. 
Look! Somebody's drowned. They shoot over the water. That makes the body come up to the top. Who's drowned? Hookie, I bet you they're looking for Doc Robinson. We won't find nothing until we get down the river to where the raft was found. How do you know that was the right raft? Why, the poor little Harker boy's shoes were still on it, you old pudding head. That dude's drowned. Us! Oh! <laughs> hey, Tom. Do you suppose they really think I'm drowned? Of course they do. Ain't you glad? Well. I suppose so, but well, I thought maybe my mother would walk. Your mother made you wear shoes, didn't she? Well, yes, but well, if she felt too bad, well, maybe I ought to go home. What? Well, you know, just for a visit. Visit? You're just scared. Shucks. I'll bet you both want to go home. Oh! Joe? Joe? What? What do you want to be when we go home? You mean... You mean we're gonna go home? In about 10 or 20 years, maybe. Oh, 10 or 20 years. I think, I think I'll be a general. And when I come home with my sword and medals and maybe one leg off. My grandpa's got one leg off. Or maybe I ought to go out west and join the Indians. And when I was chief, Put on my feathers and war paint. Don't come prancing into Sunday school. My ma always gave us pancakes and molasses before Sunday school. I know. I'll be a pirate. And I could sail right up to town with my cutlass and horse pistols, and they'd all hide and say, Tom Sawyer, the terror of the seas, is back home again. Yeah, back home again. One thing about being a pirate, nobody's gonna bother you about washing your feet. My ma always makes me wash my feet with soap. Yeah, but I bet you don't smother the covers up around your neck or fuss around with your pillow every night. Ma got me and Ida done. Well, anyhow, you won't have to listen to him in the morning, rattling the dishes and talking and laughing so loud and cheerful. My ma don't laugh much in the morning, but she sings nice hymns. Of course, there ain't such good swimming anywhere as here, Joe. But it ain't so much fun when there's nobody to tell you you can't go in. I could tell you you can't go in, Joe. I want my ma to tell me I can't go in.
that voice again. Oh, Mrs. Harper. It's a poem, Mrs. Harper, to your Joe and our Tom. Oh, read it, child. Our Drowned Boys <laughs> by Mary Wadsworth Sawyer. <laughs> Alack, our broken hearts are so sad. Alack, our sorrow, it is so hard to measure. For though oft times they may have acted pretty bad, boys will be boys. <laughs> they were our fond treasure. Oh, now, now, don't take on so. You're just wearing yourself to pieces. Oh, I hadn't given up hope until they found the rat and Joe's little shoes on it. <laughs> Poor abused boy. <laughs> I bet it was Tom's fault. Now, Sidney, don't you say one word against that dear Tom. Now that he's gone, you better run up to bed. Yes, Aunt Polly. I don't know how I can go on without my tongue. And the last words I ever heard him say were to reproach me. Oh, well, all our tears won't bring them back. Oh, Aunt Polly, don't you think you'd better try and get a little sleep now? I reckon I'd better. I'm all tuckered out. Get some rest, Miss Polly, dear. Good night. <laughs> An infinite mercy. Watch over our innocent boys. Punish me as I deserve. But not in this way. I beg of thee. Please. Oh, please let their bodies be found. So that I can look on my dear Tom's face once more for the last time. Amen. Why, Jim, why aren't you asleep? I can't, Miss Mary. I can't do nothing but think about the funeral Sunday. Now stop thinking about Sunday. Go on out and go to sleep, Jim. I'll try, Miss Mary.
What you do here? You know they're looking for you. Why, them boys was my friends. You ain't got no friend but me. You stay hid. Dear friends, we are gathered here to pay solemn and loving tribute to the memory of three fine and beautiful young boys cut off in the fullness of life's morn. What a model of obedience and uprightness was Joseph Harper. Always the prop and comfort of his dear mother. Always taking pride in being well-dressed and neat. Yet let us rejoice that he is now wearing celestial raiment. And Thomas Sawyer. I shall not speak of his kindness to man and beast alike, nor of his diligence in performing his appointed duties about the home. Suffice it to say, in the recent words of a St. Louis editor, his life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this, was a boy. <laughs> and last, but all my friends, by no means least, the figure we all had come to love, the unfortunate but enduring child of nature, known as Huckleberry Finn. How bravely he overcame the dismal handicaps of his parentage. How nobly he grew in grace and became a useful member. But now, alas, all three blossoming youths have crossed the great river. They have stepped upon the sunlit shore. Even now they march, they march in two. this time. Who saved you? Why, nobody. We was just playing pirates. Playing pirates? Making a parcel of fools out of us. If they were mine, I'd laugh the hide off. Oh, Letting us fine. think that they were drowned. Yeah. They have returned to us unharmed. Let us give thanks. Sing and put your hearts in it. Playing pirates. Just wait till I get you home. Bring on did wrong to run away and let you think we was drowned. But I dreamt about you anyway. Dream? A cat does that much. What'd you dream? Why, uh, why, Thursday night, I dreamt that you, Aunt Polly, were sitting on the sofa, and you were sitting on the wood box, and Mary next to you. So we did. So we always do. And Joe Harper's mother was here. Why, she was here. Hmm. Did you dream any more? It seems to me that Miss Harper said she still had hopes until they found the raft with Joe's... Joe's... Try harder, Tom. It was his shoes. Why, it happened just so. Mm-hmm. Go on, Tom. Oh, it's all getting as bright as day now. Then Sid said... I think he said... He bet it was my fault. Mercy on us, his very words. And you shut him up short. I certainly did. And then you went to bed. Don't tell me there ain't anything in dreams. Serene Harper will know of this before I'm a minute older. Hm. Oh, it's all getting as bright as day now. Trash. That's what happened, wasn't it? Pretty thin. As long a dream as that without any mistakes in it. <laughs> Sid! Yeah, you miss me! Tom! You, Tom! I have a good 
good notion to... How can you alive, you? What have I done, Aunt Polly? Here I go over to Serene Harper with all that rubbish about that dream. And lo and behold, she found out from Joe you was over here and heard all the talk we had that night. Oh, Tom, I don't know what's to become of a boy that'll act the way you do. I don't know it was mean, Aunt Polly. But I didn't mean to be mean. Honest, I didn't. And besides, I didn't come over here to laugh at you that night. Well, what did you come over here for, then? To tell you not to worry about us, because we hadn't got drowned. I'd give the whole world to believe that. But it ain't reasonable. Because why didn't you tell me, child? You see, when I heard talking about the funeral, I got the idea of hiding in the church, so I put the bark back in my pocket and kept numb. Bark? What bark? The bark I wrote on to tell you we'd gone pirating. Well, it's still in the pocket of my old coat. You can look and see if you don't believe me. I wish now you had waked up when I kissed you. I do, honest. Did you kiss me, Tom? Why, yes, I did, Aunt Polly. What'd you kiss me for? Because I loved you so, and you laid there moaning, and I was so sorry. Kiss me again, Tom. <laughs> Go on to school now. And don't bother me no more. I never did nobody any harm before, you'll all say that. I didn't know what I was doing. I hope, I hope to die this minute if I did. Did Muff. But Muff didn't kill him. Injun Joe says he did, and Muff thinks he did. But we saw What are we gonna do? Do? Nothing. Do you want to drop down dead in your tracks and rot? Oh. Hear ye, hear ye. The state of Missouri versus Clarence Potter, alias Muff Potter. Death was due to an incisive trauma of the heart, inflicted by a knife. It's Muff Potter's knife, all right. I sold it to him last October. Sure, I could see Muff stab him. I was as close as I am to you. That's all. The state press. Your Honor, I ask for an adjournment until tomorrow morning. Adjournment? For what? To prepare my address to the jury, which will be our only defense. You will introduce no witnesses? We've been unable to find any. Here's some more tobacco, Muff. And here's some real lucifer matches. Thank you, boys. You've been mighty good to me. Better than anybody else in this town. And often I says to myself, says I, I used to show the boys where the good fishing places was and befriend them what I could, and now they all forgot old Muff when he's in trouble. But Tom don't. And I don't. And I don't forget them either. <laughs> it's a prime comfort to look on faces that's friendly when the body's in such a muck of trouble. Good, friendly faces. 
<laughs> Shake hands. <laughs> Little hands. But they've helped my father a power. They'd help him more if they could. Tell the truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me. Thomas Sawyer, where were you on the 17th of June about the hour of midnight? Where were you on the night of June 17th about 12 of the clock? Where were you at midnight on June 17th? In the graveyard. A little louder, please. Don't be afraid. You were... In the graveyard! What did you take there? Only a... a dead cat. <laughs> and uh, just what were you going to do with your dead cat? We was going to take our warts off with him. <laughs> See? You take your cat, and all about midnight, you go get in the graveyard where somebody wicked's been buried. Your Honor. Since we must be exposed to all this boy's prattle about a dead cat, may I ask the court, where is the feline corpus delicti? We will produce the skeleton of that cat. Now, when you were in the graveyard, were you anywhere near Horse Williams' grave? Yes, sir. Speak up a little louder. How near were you? Near as I am to you. Were you hidden? Were you hidden or not? I was hid. Where? Up in a tree. And now, my boy, tell us everything that occurred. Tell it in your own way. Don't skip anything. And don't be afraid. We saw the fight. Muff got knocked unconscious. He didn't kill Doc Robinson. The one that stabbed him was... <laughs> Tom! Wait for Sydney and 
question. It's so still in here, Tom. I don't hear any of the others. Yes, we better start back. Look, Becky. It's just like a king's throne. Yes. Come on, Tom. Let's hurry. It's this way. scared of. I'm not scared with you along. Sure. I'll get you out of here. Why, I wasn't scared in the courtroom when Indian Joe threw his knife at me. I would be scared with any other boy but you. Yeah. must be on the other wagon. Uh -huh. Tom! You come! No, he isn't here. That's strange. Well, I was sure he was in the other wagon. Well, who saw him last? I guess I did. He was with Becky Thatcher in the cave. Well, then ask Becky! 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 Becky. 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 She's not here. Is Becky Thatcher in your wagon? Becky! Becky! No, she's not here. They must be together in the cave. In the cave? Lost in the caves. Lost in the cave. Lost in the caves. Lost in the cave. <laughs> Well, 
They must have turned off before they got this far. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. Look, there's a hole back here and footprints. Footprints? Come on. Listen to me. That's there, sure. I've been in this cave a hundred times, but never this far. Come on. Becky! Becky! Tom! Tom! Becky! Becky! Tom! Wait, I'll fire a shot. It's them. Hey, Judge, look. They must have gone through there. Come on. Look out, Jim. Six months. Becky, you mustn't. Please don't. I can't help it. If only I had my mother. <laughs> There. Ain't it fun having a fire? Yes, but... Tom, I'm so hungry. Did you forget this? I saved it from the picnic for us to dream on. The way grown-up people do. Well, couldn't we make a wish on it? We could try. I wish... I wish it was as big as a barrel. It's good and long. It's my kite string. You hold on to this end of it, and I'll unwind it down some of the tunnels. Oh, no. Please don't leave me. I've got to. We've got to do something. I'll take care of the candle and leave here for you.
You won't let go of it. I won't. Why don't you sing, Becky? And you won't be lonesome. If ever I see one bush or tree, young birds in their pretty nest, I must nod in place till the young birds go away to breathe their mother's breast. Thank you. 
heroic boy actually went back into that awful darkness and somehow, some way, brought our Becky out to safety. <laughs> no commonplace boy could have done that. No boy other than the noble lad whom I now present to you, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Where's Tom? Where is he? I saw him leave with Massa Huckleberry. Here they are. I got him. Here they are. They're rich. Tom and Huck are rich. They, found, they found Murel's treasure. Don't forget, we're engaged. Come on, folks. Strawberry shortcake. Oh, Sid! Aunt Polly! Aunt Polly! Why, Tom might even be president someday. <laughs> Aunt Polly! Tom Whitten! If they don't hang him first. <laughs> 